Looks like I'm making my way from the top to the bottom when it comes to Alcatel phones because I've started with the Alcatel Idol 4S, went to the Idol 4 and now I'm at their even lower end offering the Pop 4S which is kind of priced at around 200 euros here at the moment and supposed to be competing with phones like the Honor 5X and maybe Honor 5C, I guess. How well it can do that, I will tell you in the full review. And I would say let's start off with the design and build quality. And as you can see here, you can take off the shell along with even the frame and the button. Something at first I thought would be neat. Turns out maybe that's not quite the case. But first of all, what do we have here? We have dual SIM card support with an SD card as well. So you can use all three of them, but the battery is non-removable. About this bag though, it attaches wire noses as every kind of this style bag does. But since it uses noses, they kind of get loose. And especially as you can see here, it got a little bit loose here already. So I'm not quite sure how well it will live over time because it already doesn't feel all that solid because otherwise it does because it doesn't flex or anything it's just pretty much this one nose i guess got loose what else though as you can see here we have this really nice and grippy texturized back that i really like because it feels great and it looks great same as the phone overall because as you can see nice curves here all around the chrome border a little bit of a lip here with some protective glass not quite sure which kind of glass i guess it's some kind of aluminum silicate we have on white only notification led the bezels are okay for the size because it's definitely not a really compact phone. It's definitely a little bit of a bigger 5.5 feature, a little bit unwieldy. And once again, you can hear the GIF, but the rest is nice. For this price, it's definitely built well because it looks nice, definitely. But one hand usability definitely won't be all that easy. We have two LEDs here, the camera. Here we have a microphone, headphone jack, nothing on the left. On the bottom, we can see the out of sender, micro USB along with a microphone and the buttons that I think are okay in terms of tactile feedback, but just way too high because as you can see the power button, I almost can't even reach with a full stretch. So that's definitely way too high. Other than that, it's fine. As we can see, we also have capacitive buttons along with a home button that works as a fingerprint reader that actually works quite reliable, as you can see here. So there's no problem. It's maybe not the super fastest one out there, but I don't really see a problem here. And as you can maybe already see in the options, we have double tap to sleep and double tap to wake, and it works quite nice. So I would say let's get into that because we've covered that good enough. And I'm still, for the price, definitely satisfied enough. But let's get into the display here. And this is something very odd because I actually have to go into one thing first, and this is the display settings because we have mirror vision here. And this is the first device with that option that I've used. And as you can see here, we have tons of options here to go, for example, in standard mode, which is more realistic and so on. And for example, with it and the user mode, if you go into the user mode, you could change things like, as you can see, your content contrast, saturation, picture brightness, sharpness, color temperature, and you can really adjust a lot of stuff like for example even dynamic contrast and as you can see that's here, it really makes a big difference and I definitely like to turn that on, but I'm not sure if one thing that I've seen as well comes off with this kind of, a, I'll just leave it here at Vivid, but the problem is the adaptive brightness. Even though I have turned it off and I have set it to manual, it pretty much does whatever it wants because I'm at 100% now and you can see it's definitely not super bright because it's only super bright if it wants to be and I didn't see a kind of pattern here because otherwise the whites are absolutely solid and you can adjust in the way you want to. Blacks are solid, of course there is for this price range the normal amount of IPS glow. Viewing angles are not super stable but definitely good enough in this price range and the colors once you adjust them to your liking will definitely satisfy you because it is a really nice and with 1080p even sharp screen so i was fully pleased here but it was the odd behavior in terms of adaptive brightness because sometimes it was quite dim sometimes it was very bright unnecessary bright and i had to use kind of 80% of brightness just to have a kind of consistent level and that will also have an impact on the battery which I will get into though later. So overall I'm definitely pleased and it would be a nice screen if I could turn off that option. But let's check the sound here first. About the sound, 
The speaker is placed a little bit unfortunate because on the back end, I definitely noticed that I blocked it a lot. If you use it in portrait with the speaker on, you will block it quite often, but usually you will do this in, in landscape. Then it's not that bad, but it's still backfiring. Other than that though, quite good because it's actually quite loud, not super loud. There are definitely a lot louder ones, but it's definitely way above average. And it sounds quite okay because we have a little bit of m bass. The mids are actually quite strong and quite clear high. So it would have been actually a good speaker. Positioning could have been done better, but overall for this price range, I would say still noticeably above the average. The headphone jack quality was actually a little bit better than average, not quite as good as on the Idle 4 and Idle 4S, but definitely quite close to them and with a good sound and you even have some extra options, which I will show later maybe in the software, unless I forget it. So what I will do next is show you the performance and let's kill off all the apps just so we have open ground to see how fast the loading times are. As you can see, they are not crazy fast, but definitely absolutely okay, especially for this price range. I can't really complain. Things work out nice. It feels a little bit sluggish though, once the two gigabyte of RAM really get full, because this is something that I've noticed, because the SOC on its own, once we will see that, for example, in Chrome, can perform really nice, because the Helio P10, is a really nice performer. Rendering times are usually fine. This is due to my Wi-Fi now, but as you can see here, the scrolling is quite smooth. There is not a whole lot of lag. Once the app is loaded, it's just not maybe super responsive all the time, but I can't say that the jazz just didn't work out fine. Those worked out nice. As you can see here, it's just not super fast in terms of switching. It's still okay, don't get me wrong. And the scrolling is just nice. The scrolling is super smooth, almost no lag. And it's actually on a really high level. And I would even say it's better than the Honor 5C, which lagged a little bit more. This one maybe doesn't feel quite as smooth, but it performs really, really well overall. Same as we can see here. As you can see, it did reload already. So it's not maybe the very best rare management, but in normal use, I didn't really notice all that much. It's every time you launch the browser where it just kills off apps. Usually it's fine, as you can see, just so nice and smooth. In terms of multitasking, as you can see, quite responsive, but yeah, as you can see here, just not fast so it feels a little bit sluggish over time so it's maybe not the most responsive maybe not zippiest phone but once the app is loaded it's actually quite smooth performing very well so not bad for this price range actually quite good especially since it's very smooth this is just something i personally prefer now if we talk about the gaming performance i have to say here i'm a little bit disappointed i expect a little bit more from the helio p10 because we don't have really consistent frame rates they are quite sluggish and they go from quite smooth to quite yeah, not that smooth, I would say. It wasn't the greatest experience, especially games like Asphalt 8. I had to actually turn the setting from high to medium to get it playable. Riptide was fine in similar games, but once you see, for example, also Nova in a few seconds, you will see that the overall performance definitely could have been improved heavily. So I would not recommend this phone if you play a lot of heavier games. For casual games, it's absolutely fine, don't worry about here. And the temperatures were also always fine because it reached like maybe 40 degrees but due to the plastic bag, it didn't even feel warm at all. And the camera test got passed in terms of heat absolutely as well. So let's get to the battery life. I got a full charge time of about two and a half hours, which considering the about 3000 milliamp hour battery is fine. They are definitely slower phones, but faster phones as well. So it's kind of in the middle, I would say, especially for this price, which it's okay. Now about the battery life, as I already said, the brightness will have a big impact. Since I had to use a high brightness of 75 to 80% to get a, for me, acceptable overall brightness, it drained the battery a lot faster. Because what I've noticed is that if you use it maybe on automatic mode, which a lot of people do, you will get great battery life because my standardized tests went really, really well. I personally got something around four to four and a half, actually more four and a half hours of screen on time over a normal day, which should satisfy most of the people. But keep in mind, if you maybe keep auto brightness on and just use a little bit of a low brightness, I think you should even, even get five, five and a half, if not six hours, because on its own, the SOC is quite efficient and the battery is big, so not that bad after all. So let's take a look at the software here now. As we can see here, it looks very stock-like if we open that in terms of this, and you can even see we have the system tuner running, so this is nice. The draw on its own looks a little bit different, but I actually like it. It's very minimalistic, and you can see here it works a little bit different. You can see the letters and all that, but I like that. The launcher though itself is quite a minimal one. You have the option though, as you can see, for one touch stream, which is kind of something like what HTC offers as well. So 
kind of their streaming option. It's nice, but nothing I would really use. But other than that, the quick settings are customizable once you turn on the system tuner. And then, like I said already, we have some options, for example, in the display with mirror vision, very, very capable software, can adjust pretty much everything you want to. And you even get some sound options like for example, if we go into that, you can see R games audio effects, which has options for settings, mu uh, music, movie, and games. I would not use it personally though, because I noticed that it actually made the sound even worse, at least in my opinion. Other than that, it's very stock-like, very, very stock-like, and updates therefore should come quite early, but I'm not quite sure how well Alcatel actually supports their phone, so I can't really judge it too much. But just in terms of the use, I really like that. One thing that I noticed though, for example, one, my, one of my gesture apps that I used got kind of disabled sometimes and I even had to even set one setting on again. I'm not quite sure what that was all about, but other than that, I'm fully pleased. Now, let's get into the camera. Selfies didn't really impress me all that much. They weren't really super sharp, not all that great. For the price range, okay, but I've definitely seen better ones already for this price. And if you have lower light shots or artificial lights, it got even worse. And once we talk about low light, you will see that I'm not getting the best results here because quite blurry, grainy, a little bit fuzzy. Yeah, you definitely will have to use tap to focus at night because it, at lower situations it really couldn't focus all that well. Other than that, you can get okay for this price range. Pictures, once we go outside, I would still often recommend you to use tap to focus because it just gives you the better picture. And you will definitely need a very steady hand because I've noticed due to the lack of OIS, a lot of my pictures got very blurry. So. First of all, tap to focus and then make sure to have a steady hand and then you will get the decent pictures. Definitely not something super amazing, but they turn out quite okay in terms of colors. The exposure is quite fine and they seem a little bit fuzzy all around, not super sharp, but for the price, which I would say decent. Not on the level of a 5C or similar, but okay, definitely not great. But once we talk about the video camera, I was quite disappointed because everything looks very, very janky, jittery, something like that, because at the moment you see something like trees and similar and move a little bit, everything seems to jitter around and this was something I didn't like so much. Other than that, the autofocus would have worked quite decent and quite reliable and the video was smooth but not really sharp, so I'm not impressed here. So overall, selfies not all that great, low light pictures not really all that good. The picture in normal lighting conditions, absolutely solid, not great though, and the video a little bit disappointing, so not the very best camera. So let's get to the end now, not to make this any longer than it has to be. I am pleased with this phone overall, but they could definitely have improved some things, especially the build quality. I guess would have been nice if I just wouldn't have had that one loose nose. Other than that, everything fine. It's definitely not super small, but it gets the job done here. The display is very nice if it wouldn't have the mirror vision or adaptive screen. The sound is absolutely solid, maybe just backfiring, but okay. Performance was solid. Not for gaming that much though. Software is really great. The battery life is very flaky, especially due to the adaptive brightness and the camera is not all that great. So as you can see, it sounds like it's not a really great device because every category I said I had like a gripe and that is the case. You have some nice pros, but you have a lot of smaller, not that important, not deal breaking cons, but they are there. And that maybe has an impact on how you perceive this review because overall I still like this phone and for 200 euros I still could recommend it, especially if you want a, bit, a little bit of a nicer performance than for example on the Honor 5X for around 200 euros and I guess somewhere else even cheaper. It is still a nice offering because the qualities can be good. The display can be nice if you don't have a problem with adaptive brightness and if your nose is not loose, it feels great in the hand. And overall, it has definitely a lot of potential, but without all those negatives or cons, even though just minor ones, it could have been a really great offering. So I can still recommend it, but definitely take a look at it first if you can live with the trade offs So it will come once again down to if the pros overweigh the cons for you or not, and if the price range is right for you. I would prefer it over the 5X, mostly because of the performance. The Honor 5C was also a little bit more laggy than this one, for example, but overall the better phone. So if I would be able, or if I would want a little bit of a smaller phone, at this price range, my recommendation would still be the Honor 5C, I guess. So that's all I have to say. The rest is up for you. If you have any questions or something to say, leave them down below. And if there's anything else, I would like to have a like if you want to subscribe to the channel and have a nice day. Bye.